What's up guys, Luis here from Alibi Security, and today I'm glad to be back on camera to bring you a ton of information about NVR bandwidth and IP camera bit rates. As we all know, in the last 10 years, the transition from analog to IP cameras has been pretty significant. So understanding how your NVR works and how IP cameras bit rates coincide with the NVR's bandwidth is really important, and I'm glad to bring you that information today. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notified when cool videos like this one are available. Let's get started. So getting started, understanding the bandwidth of the NVR is gonna be the most important thing about this whole situation. So the bandwidth of the NVR is the capability of how much incoming data it can receive. The bit rates of the cameras is how much data it's pushing towards the NVR. What you want to do is make sure that the cameras are not sending too much information to the NVR because at that point the NVR is not going to be able to process it. So what we need to do is make sure that the cameras are set accordingly so the NVR can process that information without having any issues. The best starting point when trying to figure all this information out is the capability of the NVR. My favorite way to find out the capability of the NVR is to actually go onto our website and find the data sheet for that actual unit. So. I'm gonna go ahead and I do have it pulled up on our website here. This is the unit that I'm using for testing today. And I'm just gonna scroll down to the resources section here. And if I select data sheet, it will open this data sheet up. And let me zoom out here and show you. So this is the first page of the data sheet. It's gonna have a bunch of information about the unit, but what we're really looking for is the incoming bandwidth here. Uh, I believe it states it right here as well. Let me zoom in. 384 megabytes per second recording capability. That's a little bit more vague, but if we scroll down here, we have the incoming bandwidth, and that is showing us that it is 384 megabytes per second. Okay, before we go any further, I'm pretty sure you noticed the outgoing bandwidth listed here also. Just letting you know that this video will only cover the incoming bandwidth. We do have an outgoing bandwidth video planned for the future, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you can get notified when that video is available. Okay, let's continue. This is one of our newer units. It is a little bit pretty robust, so at this point, you know, that is a lot of, um, in, that is a lot of bandwidth available there. So. This, this unit is a 32 channel unit. If you kind of just wanted to do a quick calculation of, hey, if I wanted to distribute this 384 megabytes over the 32 channels, you can open your calculator up real quick. And we'll type 384 divided by 32. And that's giving us the number 12. So what that means is that if I wanted to evenly, evenly distribute and actually max out the box, we can do 12 megabytes per second on each channel, each camera coming in, which is actually 12,000 kilobytes. When we're talking about bit rates, I think all the bit rate information is in kilobytes. So 1,000 kilobytes equals one megabyte, all right? So 12 megabytes is 12,000 kilobytes. All right. But in most cases, obviously I wouldn't recommend using the full 12 megabytes per channel. I don't think any of us drive our cars with the pedal down. Uh, every time we drive. So with the same thing with unit, you want to make sure to give it enough kind of room to breathe and have some room to kind of work itself around if there is some, some heavy loads coming in, especially when you're doing remote viewing and etc. So, all right. So from here, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the unit and I'm going to pull that up here. I do have three cameras attached. I'm going to go to the setup tab. And under camera and encoding here. And these cameras are right out of the box. This is something that we just had here in the testing area. So I couldn't tell you the age of this camera, but the most important thing we're seeing here is that it's set to constant bit rate. Moving forward, all of our cameras are going to be set as a variable bit rate. And we highly recommend doing that because that will fluctuate the bit rate in order and kind of coinciding with what's going on in the scene of the camera, of the image. So if you're kind of just sitting and there's nothing going on in the image, it will lower that bit rate to kind of reduce the load on the box. And that's kind of what you want it to do. It's kind of like a smart kind of feature there. Obviously, all of our cameras are coming with H.265, which is a compression rate. I would highly recommend if your camera does have that option to go ahead and use that. 
the resolution is 4K or 8 megapixel. I just adjusted that to variable bitrate. The image quality, if you want to change the slider, you can. I just would recommend at this moment just to leave it in the middle at five. We've had some, some really um, good response with that. And here is our big kicker for today, the bitrate. Right now it is set to custom at 5760, which is five megabytes. Frame rate is set to 20, and this is also something that's gonna be important today. Iframe interval, I wouldn't worry about this one at all. Audio, obviously if you have audio streaming, turn it on and off. But down here in the bottom, we have smart encoding. So if you have basic mode, this is kind of, this is only really made for cameras that are coming in with OnViv. So I wouldn't recommend using that with any um, of our vigilant to vigilant units, vigilant cameras to vigilant units. So if you do have the advanced option there, you can turn that on for the vigilant cameras. Some manufacturers call it H265 plus here. Um, they're calling it basic and advanced mode and this camera doesn't have that. So, so back to the bitrate information to, in order to calculate the amount of data that this camera is going to use, you want to add up the mainstream, the substream and the third stream bit rates. And that will include how much bandwidth is used for that specific camera. So in order to do that, I'll just pull the calculator up, clear it out. We got 5760. And 512 for the substream, and 128 for the third stream, and that's going to give us 6400, which is 6.4 megabytes. So earlier when we did our math, we you know we came in with a number of hey we can have up to 12 megabytes incoming per camera, and even at this setting here, uh, we're only at 6.4 megabytes per second coming in for this camera, and overall this kind of we really like to keep it between 50 and 75 percent of the incoming bandwidth of the recorder that way you can it, you know you obviously you don't want to max out the recorder the whole time so this is at a really good spot here for this frame rate but let's say you know hey i really don't need 20 frames a second you know maybe i only, only want to do 15 or 10 for this specific camera i still want it at 4k i still want it at um eight megapixel and you're kind of, you know, well, well, what do I put the, um, the bit rate as? Cause if you lower the frame rate, you can also adjust the bit rate as well. It's a general assumption in the industry that if you look, cut the frame rate in half, you can cut your bit rate in half. But in order to kind of really confirm that the vigilant toolbox gives you a really cool option that you can kind of put some information in there and it'll give, it'll spit out a bit rate that is kind of recommended for that, uh, for those settings you put in. So let me open the toolbox here. And typically when you open it up, it starts in this device config option here. I'm gonna, gonna go down to calculation. And I'm gonna hit the add button here. And while I'm in here, I wanna choose H265 for my camera. 3840 by 2160, that is a uh, eight megapixel camera. Frame rate, I wanna put mine on 10. And if you look down here on the bottom, it says best bit rate. So it's kind of going to give you like, hey, this is what we recommend the bit rate to be at for these settings. Um, you don't have to hit add or OK here. We could just take that information, though. 2048 at 10 frames a second. And we can actually adjust that. Oh, 2048 and hit save there. And all that information has been updated. And now that we've lowered the frame rate, we have a more than optimal setting 2048 and that has decreased our incoming bandwidth limit for that camera pretty significantly but at the same time you know it's it's easier you know it's better just to kind of have your box running at a, at a nice smooth level right we don't want to max every channel out all right so now that i've kind of covered how to adjust the bitrate information on your cameras that are coming into the box and also how to like use the you know the vigilant toolbox to kind of get you a good starting point, right? You can put all the information into the toolbox and it'll just spit out the bit rate that's recommended for, for the information that you put in. I think that's kind of like the best thing about this whole situation here. A lot of times it can be kind of confusing. Where do I start? If, I'm, if I want a higher frame rate, if I want a lower frame rate, where do I put my bit rate setting at? With that tool, it'll pull, you know, it'll give you the best recommended option for your 
um, scenario. So I think that's a really cool option. And I think just understanding like, hey, the unit has a limit and we just want to make sure that the cameras are pushing in information and that are well below that limit. So, but if you really want to kind of get a snapshot or a live look in at your uh, incoming bandwidth limit, what's available and what's being used, you can you go to the maintenance tab on the left and we'll go to network info also on the left. So it's once, once we're in the network info option here, we wanna to go to network statistics. And there's really two options that we're really gonna focus on today. Obviously the type is bandwidth, that is the bandwidth of this unit. That's exactly what we're looking for. IP camera, this is the amount of incoming bandwidth coming into the unit right now. And the auto receive bandwidth, that is the amount that is available still to, um, you know, if I wanted to add additional cameras to this unit. So obviously this is a very uh, minimal incoming. I only have three cameras attached to this 32 channel unit. But here is where you want to make sure that you do have some idle bandwidth available just so you don't tax the processor so much. But I think this is a really cool spot here under the maintenance area to get some 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 detailed information about am I taxing my box or not? Am I do I have it fully loaded? That's why I'm seeing some sluggish, you know, operating cameras maybe popping in and out, maybe even a no resource message. I think we've all seen those in our day, right? So what we just want to do is just come in here and make sure that we have some some idle receive bandwidth available. I mean it's pretty simple. Overall, I hope that this video really gives you enough information on how to figure out what the incoming bandwidth is for your unit and also how to make adjustments to your cameras to stay within that incoming bandwidth limit. And in the end, if you do understand it all and you get your system up and running, um, it's just gonna produce less calls to tech support from your customers or for, for yourself. But if you do have any questions, make sure to reach out to our tech support team. They'll be more than happy to answer questions you have. And make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notified when new videos are available.